everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Josh Hose Show. I'm your host, Dave Sheets, and with me is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Josh Hose. We want to thank our season-long sponsor, Reliable Heating and Cooling. Coach, after a week off, welcome back. Glad to be here as always. I know it wasn't a week off for you and the team, but uh, a week off from the show. Uh, your Tigers are now one game over the 500 mark at 8-7, and seven, mm -hmm. about three-quarters of the way through the regular season now, give or take. Uh, last Saturday, your latest game was a win at Perry. It was a makeup game. Tigers won big, 60-35 to 35 on Saturday night. Tell us more about that game. Tough game to go into uh, just because Perry's struggling this year and hasn't won a game. And so you, know, you don't want to be that first team to – to give them a win, and they've been in some games where they've been close. Then they played McKinley close early in the year. Uh, they had an overtime game of Central, not too uh, maybe two, three weeks ago. Actually, the week right after we played Central, they played Central in overtime. Uh, so they've knocked on that door a couple times and just you know, been real close. So we challenge our guys to come in, you know, having two days off, uh, you know, where we didn't practice or anything, and uh, those are tough games as well. But uh, they came in, kind of slugged our way through the first half. I think we're up 11. Um, I think right before halftime, we talked about, like, you know, we took some bad shots and some quick shots. Uh, but came out second half, got back into the thing. You know, I think we ended up getting up 31 at one point. Um, we were able to get some guys on the court. Uh, you know, Chase DePlane comes in, hits a three at the end of the game. You know, Junior, that's been, he's a great bench energy guy, so it was good to see him go out there and get a, get a bucket. And uh, his teammates really celebrated that with him. So it was, a good, it was a good win for us just to get, you know, back on, you know, you know, win over a federal league team in a neighboring school. Uh, plus, also just you know, you, again going back to that tough thing of handling, not going into a place that you know the team that hasn't won. And uh, I think in a close game, that really would be tough because you know then your team's kind of nervous and they're, they're getting a little confident. So mm -hmm. we said, let's not make it a close game. Let's make it you know something where we can win comfortably. And our guys did the, did a great job with that. Well, it seems during the basketball season, there are times when you have to worry about the weather and makeup games and so forth. Last couple of years now, we've also dealt with COVID. So one of those uh, situations happened earlier in the season in your game against Akron Hoban. It was a game scheduled for here. Uh, you were able to make that game up back on January 28th. Lost to Hoban by 10. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. Uh, yeah, quality team. We lost that one earlier in the year uh, with the COVID. Uh, they called us a couple hours before we were hosting a, a, a whole day of games mm -hmm. and a uh, tough situation uh, but yeah we were able to find a, a mutual date that worked for us so, uh, you know we played on the 28th of January and um, got a home game out of it at least you know <laughs> we don't have many of those uh, this year but uh, mm -hmm. yeah we went into that one and, and it was a tough situation one of our former players was playing for them uh, had a really good game against us and you know Jay Crable had 14 points so he was their leading scorer and then our leading scorer on the year was not there so we were shorthanded on top of that and our guys uh, I think we were tied at halftime played a great first half and then we had just a, a really tough third quarter we ended up I think only scoring two points in the third quarter it just went cold and and you know a nod of the cap to, to our guys though, showing resiliency. They, they came back and cut it back into, I think, to nine or so um, in the fourth quarter and, and showed some fight, you know, and that's what we really challenged because I think we were down 17 at one point, early early fourth quarter, late third quarter. And, uh, you know, they just went on that run and we couldn't score. And, and you know, they, 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 they got ahead of us a little bit. But I was really proud to see the way our kids responded, you know, with being shorthanded and, and having a deficit like that to fight back. Uh, we, you know, we told our guys that's all we really want to see out of you guys is if you'll fight. You know, and, and you know you got to fight through tough circumstances sometimes. And uh, shots aren't always falling, but you know you can continue to play defense, rebound, and fight. And uh, and they did that. They did a really good job. Uh, you know, through the game, um, you know, finished the game the right way, as we say. And and you know, I was like I said, I found something with our guys there. Without having Ardell there, it was kind of an opportunity to see how they responded in a different way. And I think I was really proud of the effort they gave. And you talk about fighting back, then you bounce back on uh, February 1st, a week ago, with a big win at Barberton, where you won by 12, 61 to 49. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, another team that's struggling a little bit this year. They're, they're young, uh, they graduated some guys, but they're home, tough, tough place to play. A lot of people you know, have said over the years, Barberton's a tough place. But they're also a proud program. You know, there's a rich tradition there. So we go into it, we get up early. Um, they kind of made a run back at us. There was a technical foul. I think, you know, a couple of our, guys, our guy and our guy got t tangled up. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt it should have been a double tech, but it, it was, you know, technical on us. And so uh, they made a little bit of a run, took a lead, and then our guys responded back with a big run of our own. And so, you know, we ended up winning that one, I want to say comfortably, but, you know, like 15 or so. Um, 
you know, our guys again showed that fight a little bit that in the past I think we folded in those situations. We maybe you know kind of went into a kind of went into a hole there for about three or four minutes, but we did. We responded immediately, came back. I think Eli uh, Farrington had five threes that game, and Jalen Slaughter hit a couple, and. Um, you know, I think Brennan Crow, Calix, who's coming on here in a little bit, uh, Curtis Miller did a really good job. They have a guard that averages 20 or 20 plus a game, uh, rotating on him and doing a good job. So good team effort, uh, good win on the road. And we really said that was a big one because we thought the weather coming, we may lose a game in, going into the seating. And uh, so we wanted to get that one and, and it worked out that way. And then speaking of losing a game, that's in fact what happened on Friday. Uh, you were supposed to take on the Worcester Generals, and that game obviously didn't happen. Uh, will that game be rescheduled? Uh, we've, we've talked about it, but it doesn't look good just because of two weeks left in the season, uh, sectionals coming up and all that. So, um, we, we, you know, I mentioned something to Coach. He said that his schedule is pretty packed up like ours is uh, with losing games. Both of us started a little bit late because of football. So uh, that may be a game that we have to, you know, concede and, and go find a different one if possible. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it stinks because it was supposed to be senior night. And, you know, we just – Gave an extra game, so now we have we, they'll be on uh, the 19th against uh, Glen Oak. But mm -hmm. you know that's we did that because of COVID and everything. Just give ourselves an extra game just in case we have to move it and, and end up happening that way. All right. All right. Thanks, Josh. Sure. In a moment, we'll meet a Tiger player. But first, this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. Everything that goes into a Linux system is engineered for absolute comfort, like the parts that create your perfect temperature and humidity, or the parts that purify the air. Together, all these parts save you up to half of your heating and cooling bills. And there are few things more comforting than that. The future of home comfort is here now at Reliable Heating and Cooling. Get the latest innovation and technology at Reliable. Linux. Innovation never felt so good. Thanks to Reliable Heating and Cooling, and welcome back to the Josh Ho Show. Our Tiger player joining us this week is junior guard forward Calix Collins. And Calix, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going well. Appreciate you joining us. Calix, how old were you when you first uh, learned the game of basketball, and do you remember who taught it to you? Well, I actually really didn't start playing basketball until about third grade because I, I used to wrestle. Okay. So, but I always played basketball. My mom played basketball in high school and college. So it was, when, I was, when I was a little bit younger, like seven or eight years old, I started playing and then got the hang of it. I quit wrestling and started playing basketball full time. What are some of the things you worked on in the off season to improve your game? Definitely my defense, because we needed a defender on the court, and that was something Coach Hose brought up. Like we we needed a defender on the court, because we had problems with our defense and holes in our defense. So, and then other than that, scoring scoring was a big thing. Because last year I had I had a problem scoring because I had an injury last year with my elbow. Mm -hmm. So I just had to. I just stepped up and tried to be the best player I could be. Speaking of injuries, uh, you also play football, of course. You had a serious shoulder injury during the season. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and the, uh, the rehab that you had to go through to get back on the basketball floor. That one was hard. I, I tore my labrum, like the back of it, so it's like right here. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be a four to six month injury and I had to get surgery four to six month rehab and then I was supposed to be back actually this week okay. coming up so it would be the Boardman game when I was supposed to be back but worked hard got clear was able to get in early came back before the first of the year. Now I know coach counts on you for defense a lot first and foremost what does it take to be a solid defender in basketball? Discipline. Okay. Quick feet, discipline, you gotta, you gotta be able to stay down can't jump for head fakes or anything. Got to be quick on your feet, be able to move. Yeah. Okay. And finally, tell us something about Coach Hose that maybe most people watching <laughs> don't know about him. Oh, so when we come back from our away games and even our home games, we all, we all sit in the locker room for a little bit, okay. you know, get treatment, get in the cold tub. Some of us are out there shooting again. Mm -hmm. So these guys... Coach Hose and the rest of the coaches, they go in the office and like when I, after everyone leaves, they go in there and blast country music. <laughs> okay, that like it's just they just listen to country music full blast. Our speaker goes up to thirty two. They got it on like twenty nine or something like that. Just and just enjoy the night, watch film, 
Nice. Get comfortable, right? <laughs> yeah, get comfortable. All right. Well, Calix, we appreciate you joining us on the show. Oh, I appreciate you having me. Calix Collins joining us on the program this week. Coach Hose will rejoin us here on the Josh Hose Show after this timeout. Hello, and welcome to the Stark County Humane Society. Today we're going to give you a few pointers when considering adopting a new furry friend. All animals here at the Stark County Humane Society are spayed, neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, and if old enough, heartworm tested for our canine friends. Adopters will receive a free exam within two weeks of adoption at local veterinarian hospitals. We encourage all adopters to take full advantage of this. A one-time adoption fee is required for your new furry friend. When you adopt, you get an awesome adoption packet that includes treats for your new fur baby and savings for you. But this is not where the cost of adoption stops. Did you know the average cost of an animal like a new puppy or kitten can cost up to $500 annually? This includes annual veterinary visits, preventative care, and everyday supplies like crate, litter, food, toys. But I hope this doesn't scare you away. Adopting an animal is a huge responsibility and a commitment. Please take the time to consider the cost of adopting a new pet into your family today. I hope to see you soon at the Stark County Humane Society. Please visit our website or visit us on social media for more information. And we welcome you back to the Josh Hose Show. Coach, we just spoke with junior guard and forward Calix Collins. In what ways has Calix been able to contribute to the team this year? I'll tell you, Calix's contribution has been a plus with anything he's given us because the fact he had a shoulder surgery, a uh, major shoulder injury during football, and probably about, I don't think it was even early in the season, it was like maybe week or three or four or five, or something like that. I could be off on that, but um, I thought it was really uh, impressive to how well he re uh, rehabbed and, and got himself back and, and came back in before the first of the year. Um, that was surprising. You know, it, it, his timetable originally was like late January, early February. And so you, as coaches, you look at that, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, you, you think, okay, well, doctors say that, but it could be not at all. It could be he gets back right at the end of the season. Well, it's really hard to come into the mix, you know, after you've had a whole season of your rotations. And Calix fought his butt off to get back and get healthy and, and you know, really set a goal of getting back. Um, you know, he had some dates he was looking at him, and I talked about it earlier in the year, and I think he exceeded uh, some of those, you know, expectations. So, um, you know, that was that was just a contribution, number one, getting back and, and being able, available. Uh, the other thing Calix has done a great job for us this year is because he's coming in late, he's had to, he had a great summer for us. Mm -hmm. and, it, and his role has changed probably from what he was doing this summer, coming in late, he's just kind of figured it out, and he's become a really a defensive uh, um, contributor for us. He can guard multiple positions. He's a big, strong kid that can guard like post guys or bigger guards, but he also is quick and he can guard, go on the outside and guard some, uh, you know, some of the smaller guards. So we've you've used him a lot of times in some versatile uh, areas there, and offensively we, we play him at the guard forward area, mm -hmm. and so you know he's kind of that that kind of multi-use guy, that, you know, Swiss Army knife, if you will. Mm -hmm. They can do a lot of things for us. He had a really big game at Perry, had a career high, uh, nine points or seven points. One of the, I can't remember offhand. Mm -hmm. um, but hit, you know, hit an outside shot, drove the basket, kind of showing that versatility in his game, and he's really been a nice addition coming in for a guy that we didn't know we'd have for this, you know, even this point in the season. Well, you're heading into an extremely busy stretch, as you well know. Let's talk about this tonight. Of course, we record on on Tuesday for our Wednesday night show, but uh, tonight a road game at St. Thomas Aquinas. Yes, uh, you know, tough place to play. It's a small court. It's a good venue. Good tournament prep. Uh, they're a team that's pretty athletic. They got some length. Six eight guy inside, um, you know, yeah, six four wing it can score. It's a couple guards that are pretty dynamic. So, you know, I look at that. I went over and watched them play against Central and Coach Creamer's team. Uh, took them to overtime and then right down to the wire and ended up winning uh, in a tough rivalry game. But the environment was loud. It was exciting. So I, I imagine we'll see a lot of that today. Um, we got to play a good game. I mean, they're going to be ready to go. Um, you know, we, we played over there two years ago. And it was really an electric, uh, you know, exciting environment and. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to a you know, really good tournament prep for us going into that game and see how our guys respond on the road because we're going to be there for <laughs> the next couple of weeks. Another tough test on Friday night at Louisville against a very good Leopards team. Yes, yeah, Louisville's playing very well. Beat Jackson over here uh, on the road uh, a couple weeks ago. 
turn around and play McKinley, who's on fire right now. Uh, lost, lost them at home. Uh, Marlington. I mean, they've, they've, they've kind of rode that wave of, of momentum up and down, like, like the rest of us. But they've been up more than they've been down. And uh, tough place to play. Tom Siegfried does a great job over there. So, you know, us going over there two years ago again, it was, a, it was just – a packed house. Mm-hmm. They were excited to play. Um, so again, our guys are going to get battle tested. You know, going into some some environments where it's going to be hostile. It's going to be loud. Um, I'm excited to see how we respond. A makeup game against Wadsworth next Monday. Uh, next Monday, Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, we talked about the Grizzlies a little earlier in the year. Can you kind of give us an update? Well, kind of put them on the back burner for a while. They <laughs> they're, they're kind of. They started out really hot, and then they've kind of cooled a little bit. But they've played, you know, they played a tough schedule. So they're eight and eight, um, I believe, right now. And um, they got a tough stretch like us coming up. I know he's got a bunch of games in a handful of days, and that's why we struggled to find a date to play. Um, but yeah, so I, I think the Grizzlies, you know, they got two really dynamic players, uh, and, and the Bosley kid and uh, Callahan. And then they have some nice pieces around them. I just talked to Norton's coach, who just played them in uh, a close game uh, over the weekend, and you know he, they did a good job on them. But he said, yeah, they get, they, they present some things because they got guys can shoot it outside, they got some size. Um, so you know, going into that one again on the road, it's it's, it's a really cool uh, new, newer court, newer gym. Uh, be a great opportunity to play a, a, a Division One quality foe that we won't see in a tournament, but will really get us ready to you know for that tournament uh, coming up. We'll talk more about the Boardman game next week, but you are scheduled to play at Boardman on Tuesday, February 15th. Now, I bring that game up because it kind of ties in with the tournament. Uh, the Division I tournament drawing took place this past Sunday. Tell us about the top seeds, uh, where you're seated, and who your possible opponents might be, including Boardman, right? Yes, so seeding <laughs> changed last year. Uh, they went to super districts, they call them, and so now we had 37 teams. We're in the past, we've had like 12 or 13. So seed 37 teams, we get 21 out of 37. And it's kind of in that area where I thought we'd settle in, you know, I thought between 18 and 23, depending on how mm-hmm. everybody votes. And uh, so we get the 21 seed, and then you go online, and there's three different brackets, and you can pick. You know, so you kind of sit there and wait, and you have eyes on certain lines, and um, you know, just different, you know, different pairings and different matchups, and you know, you know the teams that you match up well with, and. Mm-hmm. Don't so etc. But uh, Coach Combs and I sat there. We looked at it. And we're kind of pointing at the. Okay, I like that line. I don't like that line. Uh, the one that we really were thinking about going on gets two years in a row. It's happened where the team right in front of us took the line, mm. and so you know it, it happens that way. And you know, um, so we, we had a backup plan and a backup plan to that backup plan. <laughs> so um, we go with Plan B and, and uh, we jumped on a bye week. And you know, a lot of coaches don't like playing the bye, but I think with our schedule, it won't be a bad thing. Um, having all those games to have some days off and rest our guys, mm-hmm. but we go and, and we'll have an opportunity to scout uh, the team that plays in the first. The first round is going to be Alliance and Boardman, okay. and as you said, we play Boardman here coming up. So that was kind of like, well, we 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 play them. We've scrimmaged Alliance. We played them a lot over the summer and some summer leagues. So there's a familiarity there, and it's kind of funny because going to the super district, a lot of teams wanted to get away from you know the federal league schools want to get away from each other. The mm-hmm. Cleveland area teams that play each other want to kind of. But you, you tend to tend to go with the teams that you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and so you see like a, you know Jackson jumped in Green's bracket. Well, or I mean McKinley jumped in Green's bracket. Well, McKinley's played Green twice already, and, and played right. them tough. So I think there's a, a level of okay. Well, I know this team. Teams in Cleveland I don't know that well. Um, we did the same thing. We, we, we jumped there. Now you know that's one game to get the districts. Uh, so we win that game. We get in the districts, and then we get an opportunity to play the number one overall seed, uh, Brush, who's very talented, but. Um, we looked at the, the top three seeds, and you know we thought it probably matched up best with them, uh, other three. But you know we'll have to see. And at that level, you're going to play somebody good no matter what. So right. you know just kind of you know you know go out and play your best game. Well, we appreciate your time. Sure. It's great to be back, and uh, we know you've got a very busy stretch. We'll look forward <laughs> to next week's show. Sounds good. Me too. Thanks, Coach. And we wrap up another edition of the Josh Ho Show now. And we want to thank Reliable Heating and Cooling, our season-long sponsor. Also want to thank junior guard and forward Calix Collins for joining us. I'm your host, Dave Sheets. Thanks for watching. And as always, go Tigers. Maslin City Schools is proud to have one of the top career technical education programs in the state of Ohio, recently receiving a number one ranking of the 93 districts in the area of achievement. 
Our Career Technical Education Department offers 14 pathways preparing students for college and careers. All students have the opportunity to participate and compete in their Career Technical Student Organization, as well as obtain valuable experience in the field while earning aligned industry credentials and or college credit in high school. Visit MassLinSchools.org for more information. Bye, sweetie. I love you. Bye, Mommy. I love you. No matter where life takes you, MCTV helps make sure you're never far from home. Hi. Are you being good for Daddy? Yes. Can we read a bedtime story? MCTV connects you to home because that's what matters most. Good night. Sweet dreams. MCTV. We go the extra smile.